Only a few people have had as much significance and power throughout history as the prophet Moses. Moses had a close relationship with God and was renowned for leading the Israelites out of Egypt and receiving the Ten Commandments. It's believed that Moses was given a profound secret while he was serving God, a secret knowledge that captured the core of adhering to God's commandments. In his unmatched dedication to God, Moses saw that adhering to his ways required much more than merely obeying a set of regulations. Knowing that true contact with the divine necessitates a transformation of the heart and mind is the key to grasping the secret he understood. One has to have a true dedication to morality. It was a profound inner journey that included love, compassion, and justice, a genuine desire to know what the Lord wanted him to do and doing it. It wasn't simply about rituals on the outside or showy deeds. Once Moses knew this truth, he realized that a relationship with God went beyond rituals and ceremonies. He realized that sincere submission to God's will and unrelenting pursuit of holiness were the foundations of meaningful worship. This is the reason a person like Moses raised his voice in prayer to ask the Father for guidance. His prayer in Exodus 33 reveals the meekness of a man who fully understood his need for God. It's a heartfelt request made by a man who understood that the task at hand would require the assistance of God in order to be completed. The prayer is a perfect example of humility. He didn't think the mission was over just because God had appointed him to lead the exodus from Egypt. Instead, he set aside time to look into his father's face for guidance and clarity. Moses recognized he was not capable or prepared for the responsibility of guiding a nation of more than three million people through the wilderness and into the land of Canaan. So he prayed in verse 33, Now, if indeed I have found favor in your sight, please let me know your ways, that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Remember that this nation is your people. And the Lord answered his prayer. Psalms 103.7 he made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. Let me know your ways is what we should be asking God. Nowadays, it's so easy to see people who believe they are sufficient in themselves. Self-made is a term that's frequently used. However, nobody can truly make themselves. We must never assume that we know everything. Rather, we should always be willing and humble enough to let God teach us. The Bible says that pride comes before a fall. It also says that there are ways that seem right to a man, but in the end, they lead to destruction. Like Moses, we need to ask the Lord to show us his ways. On our own, we'll end up lost, desperate, feeling all alone in very tough situations. But if we follow the ways of God, we will never get lost we will always be on the right track. We will always end up in the right destinations. When we follow the ways of God, the following happens. One, we get a deeper understanding of God. We're naturally unable to fully comprehend God's infinite knowledge and ways because we are finite humans. However, there is an innate desire for all of us to get to know him better. We express our honest desire to delve into the depths of God's divine nature when we approach Him in prayer and expressly ask Him to reveal His ways. Recognizing our own limits and our willingness to submit ourselves to His direction and wisdom is an act of humility and vulnerability. When we genuinely seek God to reveal His ways to us, we start on a transformative path we engage in a sacred conversation with the divine through prayer, allowing ourselves to be open to his revelation and direction. In attempting to comprehend God's ways, we develop a mentality of receptiveness and a willingness to align our lives with his purposes. As we study God's ways, heavenly derived precepts and concepts are introduced into our lives. To our great delight, we learn that those doctrines and values can be applied in the here and now. They're suitable and applicable in our lives, in all the situations we might find ourselves in. We realize who we are when we accept, believe, 
and follow them. They give us our identity in Christ and help us to stay faithful to the journey of salvation. Following the ways of God makes our lives simpler because we get to live as He wants us to, not how circumstances may dictate us. We take pleasure in tranquility when there is none. We find joy where there is none. We enjoy having guidance where there's confusion everywhere we look. We are able to have strong, developing relationships in a world where so many are becoming polarized. We need to learn the ways of God. We're not born knowing them. They weren't part of our DNA. When we become new believers, we bring a lot of knowledge with us, but God's ways are not among them. That's why we need to actively and intentionally learn them. All we need is to have that desire and put in the effort. God is more than willing to teach us his ways, just like he taught Moses. He applies it to our life, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, as Isaiah put it. He imparts truth to us according to our capacity to comprehend it. He opens up to us more the more we ask for information. In a way, we resemble the children of Israel as they dramatically emerged from Egyptian servitude in several ways. Israel was freed from 400 years of servitude and slavery in Egypt in the book of Exodus. They were a people with a serious issue that God would have to deal with even if he freed them and claimed them as his own. Israelites were all born in Egypt. Their way of life had been shaped by Egypt. They had acquired knowledge of Egypt's culture, language, and thought processes. They behaved like Egyptians, thought like Egyptians, and ate like Egyptians. They were slaves and had an Egypt mentality. God had freed them from Egypt, and now he was going to free them from Egypt. The Israelites needed to change their way of thinking. They would need to be retrained and educated in God's ways rather than the ways of Egypt. Israel needed to understand that they're who God said they were, not who Egypt said they were in the past. They needed to learn about the rules and values that God had established for his people in Canaan. Like the Israelites, we enter the kingdom of God like young children who require guidance and correction in his ways. God kindly responds to our requests for guidance by graciously revealing himself to us in a variety of ways. He may communicate with us through his written word, giving us a profound understanding of who he is and what he wants. He may direct our feet down the righteous way by speaking to us through the still, small voice of his spirit. As we diligently work to grasp them, our understanding of God's activities and his intent begins to match with his eternal perspective. We develop discernment and wisdom, which helps us negotiate the difficulties of life while knowing more about his purposes. We develop the ability to look beyond the immediate situation and adopt a wider, eternal viewpoint. God's ways transform us. We must understand that when we learn his ways, God starts working for us, beginning to bring about some great changes in our lives. Philippians 2.13 For God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him. We are like clay on the potter's wheel and God is the potter. The potter is hard at work removing all the imperfections from us that would prevent him from molding us into the vessel of his choosing. We are changing day by day, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, as we're taught God's methods. The Holy Spirit checks our intentions and aligns them with God's word daily. He also examines our values, goals, and priorities. As the Holy Spirit re-educates us with the truths of God's word, we get transformed through the renewing of the mind. We must know that Satan's plan includes encouraging us to stick with our current course of action. He's aware that if we continue to do what we want, we won't be serving God. The will of God is not something we will ever accept or follow. People who attempt to live the Christian life against God's will are dissatisfied, angry, and unhappy. Only when we follow God's will will we come into contact with His presence, 
his purpose, his sustenance, and his power. Satan, therefore, knows that if he can prevent us from following God's ways, he can keep us aimless, easily defeated, and rapidly demoralized in our Christian walk. Let's be careful lest we fall victim to his schemes. God's ways bring about true salvation and freedom. Humanity has taken a number of different pathways in its search for salvation and freedom. True and enduring salvation, on the other hand, can only be discovered through God's ways. God's ways provide a transforming path that results in release from the bonds of sin, hopelessness, and servitude. Sin has been a problem for people since the dawn of time, separating them from God and trapping them in a cycle of guilt, shame, and hopelessness. People are always looking for a way out of these chains. Human efforts have proven futile so far. The solution is found in God's ways, which offer reconciliation, forgiveness, and redemption. By following the ways of God, we're freed from the burden of sin and the hopelessness it brings. All who believe in Christ now have access to salvation because of his death and resurrection. The soul can be freed by accepting Christ as Savior and adopting his teachings. The ways of God lead people to accept the gift of grace, enabling them to be forgiven, at peace with God, and restored to their actual selves. The ways of God free us from all sorts of human slavery. They encourage togetherness by dismantling prejudice and hatred. They teach people to love one another. Through following God's ways, relationships are repaired, reconciliation is accomplished, and true freedom is realized. It is only by seeking and being obedient to the ways of God that we can find our real calling and enjoy tremendous fulfillment. Let us be like Moses, acknowledging our own shortcomings and seeking the guidance of God.